Welcome to another Orb Composer tutorial video, brought to you by Hexachords. I am Benjamin, Artistic Director at Hexachords, and in this video, we're going to be talking about an introduction to Orb Composer S. Getting started. What is Orb Composer? Orb Composer is the name of the artificial intelligence designed for music composers. More than five years of research and development were necessary to create this smart tool for composers, bands, orchestrators, etc., to help them learn new musical ideas and enhance their creativity. Orb is not a replacement for a composer, instead it is a tool for ideas and to create full orchestrations, songs, etc. very quickly, which you can then keep as they are or edit them further in your DAW of choice by exporting your MIDI or WAV audio. More about that later. You are still the artist, and Orb Composer relies on intelligent decision making from the composer to define what it will write. Installation on PC and Mac First, for PC users, download the Orb Composer software from your account at www.orb-composer.com slash my-account and click the Windows icon on the software you have purchased. Once downloaded, simply run the .exe file and install the software as you would any other. You will then need to restart your PC. For Mac users, the installation is similar, but you will also have to install Orb's MIDI drivers separately. MIDI Drivers Explained Currently, MIDI support for Orb Composer S is only basic support of transport controls, play, stop, back. Extended support for MIDI will be included in future versions, but those are the current limitations. Orb Composer also has its own MIDI drivers that are installed on your computer whenever you install Orb Composer. You can see a full list of all the MIDI channels and their channel outputs in the description below. However, there's not very much interaction with this, so it's not really something to take into consideration. VST Scan Explained VST scanning enables you to use external VSTs in Orb Composer S, such as Contact, Omnisphere, and many, many others, including effects plugins. You can access VSTs and scan for them in any of three ways. Press Ctrl-Shift-P, click on a name of an instrument on the left side of the main window, or click on the Edit button at the top and click on Instrument Preferences. Once here, you can then click on Search Paths next to the text VST Explorer. Click the Circle Arrows button to refresh your VST list. VST folders are always scanned again on startup of Orb Composer. To disable this, go to Edit, then Show User Settings, and then uncheck the box that says Update Plugin List at Start. It's important to note that while Orb Composer S supports VST3, it is recommended to use VST2 as VST3 support currently is only basic in this version. DAW versus Standalone Workflow Previously in Orb Composer, you had to connect Orb Composer to a DAW, which was quite tedious to set up and much less reliable than Orb Composer S. Orb Composer S is a standalone software that enables you to have a much less intrusive and complicated workflow. You simply insert all of your VST instruments into the articulations or instruments you are using. And you can even add VST effects to each articulation as well. However, Orb Composer does have some limitations. And while you may be satisfied with the results in Orb, you might want to edit MIDI or WAV files separately. It is at this point that you would export your files and open them in the DAW of your choosing for further editing. We will go over this more in detail later. UI UX Overview Menus Explained While the basic UI of Orb Composer S hasn't changed much since Orb Composer Original, there are some key features that should be noted that are different, and we will review the UI just generally. For example, there is a new menu option in Orb Composer S for defining sound output settings and choosing the sample rate and hertz of your project. This is an important setting to get right. Set your samples too high and your latency will have a really long delay in listening, but set it too low and you might run into issues with cutouts. I suggest somewhere between 1024 and 2048, depending on the project, for optimal latency and least amount of cutting out issues. Otherwise, for the most part, Orb Composer S doesn't have many UI changes. Let's review the UI by making a track together from scratch. My first music with Orb Composer. So for our first track, I'm going to be doing a basic piano track. Very simple. 
The first thing I want to do is change all of the piano tracks from the basic orb piano to addictive keys because I just like the way addictive keys sounds. You can of course use any instrument you want, and all you have to do is drag and drop the instrument into the drop instrument here. Next, I'm going to be putting in a reverb effect from FabFilter, because I really like their reverb. I'm not going to be editing or tweaking any of this, I'm simply going to be using it as a basis for listening. Next, we're going to need to drag in some blocks. But first, we actually want to set our settings. So I want to set the settings to 80 beats per minute. I think I'm going to go with a C minor scale. And then for our time signature, let's go with 6-8. And this will make sure that when I drag in my blocks, they're all defaulted to that. So let's do that with the intro. We'll do a basic intro. I want to change the intensity so that we start, well not, no, let's start lower and then work our way up a little bit. Kind of start with a soft intensity. And then we're going to bring in a theme block. As you can see, the intensity drawing line there is, it matches perfectly. And then next, I can see that my bass is actually playing the background role, so I'm going to go to roles and then change it to bass. So again, all I really did there was just double click on the bass line clip and then click on roll and then go to base and click apply and that'll change it to a base. Next I'm gonna go ahead and change the structure of the block. So in this case I want to change it to I think how about just question based on answer question. Okay so we'll do question and then answer based on question. And then next we're gonna to want to copy and paste this block because I want to use it again. So to do that just right click on the very top there, copy block, right click on the plus sign and paste. Very, very simple. And then the next thing we're going to do is, well, where do we go? Let's see, the intensity did some weird stuff there. Let's fix that. There we go. Not really sure what happened there. We'll make the second time with this plays a little bit louder, more intense, and then have a little bit of a curve there. And then next we're going to add a ending. So we're just going to do a basic ending, one bar, and just kind of end the song. And we'll leave the intensity right there for a light ending. And now let's listen to what we have so far. So you can probably hear there was some weird stuff going on in there. For example, I really think the melody was too high, so I'm going to change the register to just regular high instead of very high. But I also want to add some momentum and complexity to the melody. So to do this, all I'm doing is double clicking on the block, going to rhythm, clicking on average and low complexity and momentum, and then obviously changing the register, which I forgot to do, so we'll change that to high instead of very high, so it's a little bit, you know, cleaner register. We'll do the same thing for all the blocks here. And now that that's done, there was some weirdness in the piano there, in that piano 3 line, so I'm just going to delete these clips. You can do that by right-clicking and deleting, or you can just click on the block and then click the delete button on your keyboard, as I've done here. And then all I'm going to do is click and drag to extend that to the very end of the block. And now let's listen again.
Refresh Melody and Chords with AI. Now that we have our completed track, I think this could do with some fresh melody. Let's change only the melody and see what we get. We do this by simply pressing the button in the first theme block with the two tied eighth notes. I think for this block, I might change the chords. To do that, you just push the button labeled C7. And now let's hear this again, shall we? You know, this chord progression is okay, but I'd really like to make it my own. Build your own chord progression. To do this, I can simply click on any chord and open up the chord editor window, which gives me a myriad of options and a ways to evaluate chords, including hearing them in context. In other words, Orb Composer will play the chord before, the one you selected, and the chord after, so that you can hear what the chord progression you selected sounds like. Now that I'm kind of happy with the project, it's time to export. Exporting MIDI in WAVE. To export your project, go to File, Export MIDI, or WAVE. In this case, I'm choosing MIDI so I can edit this further in my own DAW, and then navigate to where you'd like to store the MIDI. I typically store the MIDI in a folder labeled MIDI, in the same folder as my current project so as not to get things lost. But there's a cool other feature that you can use as well. You can simply drag and drop any clip from Orb Composer directly into your DAW. To do this, just left click while holding shift on the clip you want to export, and drag into a MIDI channel in the DAW of your choice. If you enjoyed this tutorial, give us a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos in the future. Also, you can purchase Orb Composer at orb-composer.com slash shop. Thank you for watching. I'm Benjamin, Artistic Director of Hexachords, and it's been my pleasure making this video for you today.